Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from TripAstute. In this video, we wanted to share our recent day trip from Las Vegas to Death Valley and provide some tips in case you're interested in doing the same trip. One of our resolutions this year is to visit as many national parks as possible. We're lucky to live within easy reach of many of these beautiful parks. And since we have the Southwest Companion Pass for another year, it makes it even easier. In fact, we're planning a national park road trip for our honeymoon in September. So if you have any suggestions on your favorite national park, let us know in the comment section below. We decided to visit Death Valley for our first trip of 2019. Since I needed to use my free annual night with Hyatt by March, we decided to use it at the New York, New York Hotel in Las Vegas. As a side note, the hotel has a Shake Shack on the premise. So we were able to use our monthly dining credit from our American Express gold card during our stay which was a nice little bonus. Las Vegas was our base for this trip, and despite it being a loud and bright place, we decided to leave it behind and visit one of the most famous national parks in California, known as Death Valley. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome to our channel. TripAstute is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points and miles, and innovative gear. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. Death Valley is a desert valley located in Eastern California in the Northern Mojave Desert, bordering the Great Basin Desert. It's one of the hottest places in the world in the summer with the Furnace Creek area recording a record high temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit or 56.7 degrees Celsius. The area was named Death Valley by settlers during the California Gold Rush in the 19th century. They were shocked at the barren landscape, which also claimed the lives of several who attempted to cross. It's definitely an intimidating but beautiful landscape, and I can only imagine how it must have felt for those attempting to cross it in the past, especially given the harsh conditions. So we wanted to share a rundown of our one-day itinerary from Las Vegas to Death Valley National Park. We think this might be a fun day trip for those of you who are visiting Las Vegas who might want something a little bit different. We started the day early and picked up a rental car around 7 a.m. Since we have Avis Preferred as one of our Chase Sapphire Reserve benefits, it was really easy for us to grab the keys and get on the road without having to stop for any paperwork or even any lines. We headed out of Las Vegas on the 160 highway towards a small town of Shoshone. After stopping for gas, water, and snacks, we took the 178 highway straight into Death Valley National Park along Jubilee Pass and past Ashford Canyon. This initial drive took about three hours, including a stop, and was easy to navigate. The driving time included an hour in the park with incredible views and places to stop for photos. Also, if you're a Star Wars fan, you should know that Death Valley was used for many of the scenes showing Tatooine, especially in Episode 4, A New Hope, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Not that I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Okay, maybe I'm a fan. The first stop on our trip was Badwater Basin at 282 feet below sea level. It's the lowest point in North America and is a very unique and interesting place to visit. It honestly looks like snow from a distance, but it's not something that I've ever seen or experienced before. We walked out along the salt flats and enjoyed the views of the surrounding valley. It was a good place to stretch our legs after being in the car for a while. Our second stop was a natural bridge. Not far past Badwater Basin, we saw the sign for the natural bridge. We took the road to the right and drove a mile along a dirt path to reach the trailhead. The road up was very bumpy, but worth the drive. We took the short one third of a mile hike uphill to the natural bridge, which is a natural formation that looks like, you guessed it, a bridge. Just past the bridge are the Dry Falls, a cool rock structure that looks like a waterfall, though without any water. Despite it being a short hike, the trail surface is loose gravel, which makes it a bit more tiring when walking uphill. It feels a bit deceiving since it looks like it should be an easy walk up, but just be aware if you're traveling with kids or anyone who might have any physical limitations. Our third stop was the Devil's Golf Course. Once we were back on the main road, we kept driving until we reached the sign for the Devil's Golf Course. We took another gravel road on our left and reached this very unique and odd looking place. The Devil's Golf Course is a large salt pan that was given its name after a 1934 National Park Service guidebook stating that only the devil could play golf on this surface. The landscape has a rough texture from the Hamite salt crystal formations. You want to be especially careful in this area. There are signs warning of significant injuries and even broken bones due to falling on the sharp crystals in the area. If you're traveling with kids or obsessed with selfies, you'll want to be especially cautious. Our fourth stop was the Golden Canyon Trailhead. 
We did a short hike to the Red Rock Cathedral, starting at this trailhead. There are a couple of hiking options in this area, however, due to the time constraints, we opted for the shortest one, a three mile round trip hike to Red Rock Cathedral. The hike took around an hour through a golden canyon that looked like the setting of Star Wars. When you get to the end of the trail, you'll go through some arches and narrow canyons before making a small climb of approximately 200 feet. Once you're at the top, you'll get an incredible view of the area. Our fifth stop was Zabriskie's Point. There's an option to hike to Zabriskie Point from the Golden Canyon Trailhead, but in the interest of time, we decided to just drive there instead. This is a beautiful viewing spot with vast and eerie views of Death Valley. Apparently, it's a great place to see the sunset as well, so we'll have to try that the next time we're in the area. Our final stop was the Mesquite Sand Dunes, which are located near Stovepipe Wells toward the northern part of the park. We drove through Furnace Creek on the way, one of the only semi-built areas we came across in the park. Furnace Creek has a couple of accommodation options and an overpriced gas station in case you really need to fill up your tank. The sand dunes were incredible to see and a huge contrast from the salt flats that we had walked on earlier in the day. It was so interesting to see a concentrated area of golden sand dunes right in the middle of nowhere. It's a good spot for photos and a nice place to stretch your legs before the drive back to Vegas. While a lot of people were walking around without shoes on the sand, I still would recommend wearing some kind of footwear. There were red ants on the sand dunes and the last thing you want is a stinging bite. We left the park toward Beatty around 3.45 p.m. It took us around two and a half hours to make it back to Las Vegas, including two stops for coffee and gas. We were back at our hotel after returning the car by 7 p.m. just in time for dinner. As always, if you're planning a trip to Death Valley from Las Vegas, here are some tips to keep in mind. Number one, avoid booking an expensive tour. The name Death Valley is a bit daunting, but it's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. Everything is well marked in the park, so it's easy to navigate on your own. Some quick research online, like this video, will help you arrive prepared to explore the park. We researched some tours before deciding to make the trip solo, and some tour companies were quoting $225 per person for the day for a very similar itinerary. To give you an idea of what we spent, here's a breakdown of our cost. $26 for the car rental. Keep in mind that I did not opt for the rental car insurance since I used my Chase Sapphire Reserve to book the vehicle, which includes primary insurance coverage. $20 for water, snacks, and lunch. $20 for the park fee, which we paid at the Badwater Basin parking stop. $36 to fill up our gas tank before returning the car. And $10 on coffee on our return trip back to Las Vegas. Total for two people was $112. If you divide that by two, we spent $56 per person. Plus, we had a lot of flexibility in where we wanted to go, which was priceless. I'm sure I could have easily spent $56 in the casino, but I doubt it would have lasted me very long. Also, I'm not against tour companies in any way. In fact, I often use them when traveling abroad. However, I honestly don't think you need one to explore Death Valley. And if you're someone who likes to hike, then you'll also appreciate not being restricted by a rigid tour schedule and itinerary. Number two, pack plenty of water and snacks. In fact, I would say bring enough food and water for the day since there are very limited food and drink options in the park. The first built up area we came across was Furnace Creek after being in the park for around four hours. Also, the area is very dry, so you'll definitely want to hydrate. Even in the cooler weather, I still felt extremely thirsty when we were hiking on the trails. I recommend using insulated bottles that can maintain the temperature even when exposed to warm conditions. And if you find it hard to pack a water bottle in your suitcase due to space, I recommend checking collapsible bottles like the ones from Platypus. Number three, wear appropriate clothing. You wanna wear layers as the temperature tends to get very hot and very cold depending on the time of the day. Even in February, it was fairly warm by late morning. I was down to a wool t-shirt by noon, but was back to wearing my hoodie and jacket when we were leaving the park. Also, I definitely recommend hats and sunglasses. The area is extremely bright and windy, so you'll wanna protect your eyes. We actually forgot our hats, which was very annoying. I honestly was expecting it to be much colder, so we packed thermal hats. However, we should have brought our sun hats and sunscreen to protect us, so don't make the same mistake as us. Number four, download offline Google Maps. There is limited to no reception in the park. We mentioned this tip in a lot of our videos and can't stress enough how useful this was when we were navigating around the park, especially since it's so vast. Number five, rent an SUV. I usually recommend renting the most economical car, but for Death Valley, I actually recommend getting a car that has a higher ground clearance and either four wheel drive or all wheel drive. The unpaved roads for some of the attractions were extremely bumpy and we noticed a lot of regular cars struggling to make it to the end of the road. Some even gave up and turned around since the roads were so rough. Ironically, I booked a basic economy car for our trip, 
but apparently Avis didn't have one available, so they gave us a smaller all-wheel drive SUV instead. It ended up being a great car to explore the park. Number six, pack sanitizing wipes and gel. This is also a common travel tip that we often recommend. While there are plenty of restrooms in the park, we didn't see running water or sanitizing gel at any of them. I highly recommend bringing hand sanitizer or wipes. You'll feel so much more comfortable and clean, especially since the restrooms tend to be a little bit spartan. Overall, I was glad we made the trip to Death Valley. It's a very doable day trip from Las Vegas and a great alternative activity, especially if you're not fond of the types of activities that Las Vegas has to offer. For example, I'm a horrible gambler and not much of a drinker, so I'm much better suited for exploring the outdoors. This trip allowed us to enjoy both worlds, the natural beauty of the desert, as well as the nightlife of Las Vegas. Have you been to Death Valley? Do you have any other tips for travelers? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing our video with others. It really helps us with growing our channel and our community. Until next time, travel safe, travel smart.